Okay, Matthew. Um, a couple of weeks break there. Um, have you used it to your advantage in training to get sort of things sorted out, or what? Maybe. Well, yeah. Well, to be honest, what we've done is we went, um, kind of went and done some physical work. Um, not. I think the boys are really fit, but we just thought we, it was an advantage to get it topped up there. So last Tuesday we, we came in, we trained on the back pitch. Um, then I managed it a good. They've put them in through a physical session. Done the same on Thursday down at Anna. Um, we done a real tough session down there. And on Saturday we, we used uh, the gym at Manfred, which was a massive advantage to us because um, it introduced us to Kevin and the boys to the gym. And it and it just got us a little bit of something different, you know, as opposed to pitch work constantly. Um, Allied to all of that, kind of as much as it was physical work, there was a bit of tactical play in there, which was good. Obviously, leading up to these last few games, and and tonight, you know, the guys that are out there training again, and um, Andy and Trevor, uh, Dave, they're looking after them, but they, they're kind of working on what we want to, or what we hope to see on Saturday, and then it means on Thursday night we can use just purely on tactics um, and tactical play because we feel like. They shouldn't really need much more physical work for the rest of the season now. Yeah. Talk about Sardar then. Um, the yeah. Bella away, we're going to finally get to play this game. Um, it's going to be a tough test, as it always is up there. Yeah, oh, look, it's a difficult place to do. We know that it's a narrow, tight pitch. Um, they, they expose it really well in the way that they play. And we've had them watched a couple of times in the last month. Um, I suppose, well, it was, a, it was a couple of times in a couple of weeks, but obviously it was a month ago um, when that happened. So they may well have changed the team, but we. We take the positives from when we played them here and beat them 3-2 and also the 3-2 game when we played them up there and we just hope that um, our game plan will suit again how we're going to go and play and approach the game to get us the three points that we need. Obviously with a couple of weeks back there, the reserves had a lot of, uh, almost a, uh, almost four games. Yeah, they've, they, they've been playing Saturday, Tuesday for the last month and it's been fantastic. Um, whether it's been fantastic for them and for Neil, I don't know, but it, in terms of myself and the rest of the staff, it's brilliant because now we can get out and watch them. And also what it does when we play midweek, it's just something I advocate and it's something I'm calling for anyway, is it means that some of the experienced players that maybe are missing out on game time on a Saturday, they can get and help and then they can help the young fellas and bring them along. and. Well, when I say experienced, I suppose Ryan Carmichael's playing because he hasn't maybe started his 17, so um, maybe experience isn't the right word. But, you know, boys that have been playing in the first team and then it means they're getting to go out and play and it, and it gives the other young fellas a massive boost to get them down and, and hopefully it helps see them over the line because they want to win the league and it's not all about that. Uh, but it's certainly a good, um, it's a good starting point for the season if our under twenties can win the league. Yeah, and obviously they are winning games, but they're playing some fantastic football at the reserve level as well and scoring a lot of goals. Well, that's been yeah. a No, it is because it, goals are a massive thing at any level. And look, I suppose we could look at Jamie Douglas went and and played and scored five in the first half the other week, which is brilliant because I need him back and ready to play for us. So he'll get another game tonight. Um, and it makes him then available for contention as long as he comes through um, injury free, of course. And the goals are the same size at any level. So when you're putting them in and, and you know, we're seeing the way that the boys are scoring and Callum's doing really well and Nettis um, and Ryan's got a few goals, you know, they're all then options for us because I suppose it's attacking options that we like to put on the bench majority. Um, and, and the more they're doing the business out there, the better it is for me. Tackling done um, during the week, just been away in Spain yeah. with Northern Ireland 21s, and he got a full 90 minutes early the United against Mexico, and by all accounts played well. Yeah, and it's uh, super for him. Um, I don't think I've, you know, it's no secret. I think he's the best young keeper in the country, and that's either playing here or in England. In terms of under 21 goalkeepers, he's 18. I still think he's the best. Um, and it's and it's brilliant for him, and it's and it's brilliant for us as a football club, even though he's a Cliftonville player. They're his parent club. I suppose the fact that we've brought him in and shown that he can do well will stand us in good stead further down the line with other young fellas that we're trying to bring to the football club because we know they're going to get in and it shows that international recognition comes from part of down. Jared Story's been involved with the under-17s. Um, Luke Wilson, Liam McKenna, Ryan Carmichael have been looked at with the under-19s and we've you know other fellas that have been involved at the younger age group. So it's a real good football club at the minute in terms of producing the youth and getting them, like you say, international recognition and then from further afield. Because when you go and play international football, you get recognised in terms of clubs in England are coming in and we are getting that now currently with a lot of requests for our players.